Hello. I want to talk a little bit about how we can begin working with mainframe automation in OpenRPA. So if you install OpenRPA or already have it installed, you have the option to install uh, mainframe automation here. So you have to select will be installed on local hard drive and it will then install an extension to OpenRPA that gives you access to these activities. So with these activities, you can create a session to a mainframe. Um, this is still in beta. Uh, there, there will be bugs, uh, not all different versions of the TN protocol has been implemented, but at least two of the majorly used versions are there right now. So the way that we work with this is once we have a terminal session, we can set it up and test it simply by clicking open recorder. So by default, it will try and connect to localhost on port 3270, and it will use the oldest version of the protocol uh, which just happened to be what also matches the test mainframe that I covered in a different video. So if I click connect, I will now be connected to the local sample mainframe application. So there's a couple of different approaches to how we can start recording and, and doing stuff with this mainframe. Um, you could, of course, start dragging in activities one at a time and configure them the way that you want them. That's perfectly fine. Um, we could also we can also use set text and get text to work with the different fields that is sent by the mainframe using the protocol. So even though it looks like it's just text, it's usually actually a lot of string and strings and fields with different properties. Um, but most mainframes will also allow you to simply just type and whatever has focus is what receives what you're typing. And you can also get text at specific locations if that is what you want. So in this instance, um, this mainframe will sometimes show a banner when we connect and sometimes it will actually just show the logon screen. So we have our first thing we need to handle by not just clicking record and start doing stuff. So the first thing I probably want to do now is I want to detect if it is showing this screen. And I can do that with the activity called wait for text. So wait for text will basically take any text that is on the screen and it will start searching for that specific text. So we can say that I only want to be searching for one second. Come on. There we go. And I can decide that the text I want to search for is multi-user, which is only present on, on this um, welcome screen. And if that screen is there, I want to send a key, which is enter, which makes it go to the next screen. So I can either drag in send key like this, and I can go over here and I can type enter. Um, and usually we, you would also enable wait for keyboard, which basically makes the activity wait for the mainframe to tell us that the keyboard is ready for input. And once it has sent the key, it will also wait for the keyboard to be ready for input. So the next thing we do will be ready. Um, I can also select this sequence that I want to add something to. I can click catch keys. And then if I click inside here and I press enter, it will record that I pressed enter and it will add it as an activity to the workflow. And it also sent the enter key inside the terminal emulator so I can continue my automation. Let's disable that again. So the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to type out uh, I want to fill out username and password. So here we will probably use the set text uh, activity so we can actually work with the fields. So if you select high 
highlight on move you can actually see all the different fields that is inside this screen and the ones with green are input fields the one with red are string fields so in this case let's disable that again if i click uh, click the username field it will highlight that and if i then set uh, click set text i can now set a value for that field so the username according to the guide is dollar sign and three zeros and the password is uh, music. And the last thing I need to do is I need to submit this. So I will click catch keys and I will press enter. And that made the logon process complete we now have a screen telling us you know when we last sign in and important information we need to know um, but let's test what we have until now so if i click close and i click run it will do what i just did except it went so fast i couldn't really see what was going on so i could single step by pressing f10 and you can see that it does the different things that we wanted it to. Um, but the, the terminal closes down and that's what we normally want. But while we are recording, it can be super annoying that we have to constantly open and close the, the, the terminal session. So if you go to run plugins, terminal emulator and disable this check mark, this check mark will tell the robot to not close a session when a workflow completes or when a workflow fails. So what happens now is that if I set a breakpoint, uh, okay, not set a breakpoint. If I press F10 and when I get to the point where I wanna be and I click stop, it won't close the terminal session. And that means that when uh, I can now continue off where I left on and start doing the things that I want to do. So next we have this welcome screen and yeah, it's a welcome screen and we just need to press enter. So I'm just going to duplicate the enter key. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to duplicate the enter key and press enter. And I need to refresh. And here is now our uh, main menu where we can now interact with this mainframe again as you can see there's a lot of different fields inside this mainframe um, and and we can find them and and get and and work with any of these fields um, i have some issues with finding the exact location of the mouse is so sometimes it could be a little bit off so if that happens like it does here focus on what is highlighted not where the mouse is it's the highlighting that is the important part so let's imagine that we want to get um, one of the fields let's say we want to get day of year so i'm gonna disable highlight so it stays on the field i click on day of year and i click uh, get text and what happens is it will now create a variable with the name of that field which well, it don't really have a name, so the name is going to be either string or field, and then the index. So in this case, string 125, and that means that we will now always get that specific string at that specific index. Um, if the screen can change and the number of strings that is present on the screen changes, this is not the right way to do it. But if the screen never changes, this is an easy and super convenient way of quickly getting that specific field. So now I can prove that I actually read that by typing out that um, uh, do a right line with that specific field. So let's close the session and uh, yeah, never mind. Let's run that again. So and I forgot to add the field. There we go. Actually, let's set a breakpoint. So if I run this now, we can see that it actually read the field. It says 146 in the outlook uh, in in the output window. Um, and, and, and yeah, now we can do the different things that we want to do. 
Uh, one noticeable thing is that not any key that you would normally send using a mainframe is supported doing the recorder. So if you need to send a special key, let's say F22, uh, just add a send key and then type the name over here. You can't record that key, but you can of course still send it. So just type the name of the key you want to send and that then gets sent. I hope that gets you started on mainframe automation.